All right. So now that we've sort of understood the sales process, we've, we've really got to, to come to terms with that piece. We have to get people that are going to potentially buy, and that's lead generation. And what we're going to look at now is what I call the hub and spoke sales lead model. Okay, so effectively, we're going to have in the middle here, our hub. And this hub can be your website, if you have one, or potentially, it could be your socials. Now, I prefer it to be your website just based on the fact that when somebody is on your website, there's no distractions. If somebody is on their socials, you and every other person in the world is on social. So they can also look at somebody else and their attention can be taken from you. So let's just say for now, let's just say this is your website. So your hub is your website. Now, if you don't have a website right now, that's okay. You would use your socials in this analogy. So what we're gonna look at here is the separate spokes that we wanna add in that we're going to pull leads from, okay? So oftentimes I start with business owners and we work with them and they'll tell me that they have a Facebook campaign happening and running, and that's it. So they're just relying on social media. And oftentimes it's paid social media. So literally they have one spoke happening. Now let's just say that this type of um, uh, media brings in five leads a month. Well the rest is hope. The rest is praying. The rest is wishing that it's going to get better as opposed to doing something about it. So now let's look at filling up the rest of the spokes so that we can get five new leads from each one and really start to make a difference. So let's look at spoke number two. We now have social media already happening. What about if we looked at B2B engagement? So is there opportunities to have corporate partnerships, it's corporate, that we can dial into and, and leverage from? So for example, if you uh, run a CrossFit gym and let's say there's a local coffee shop, could you connect with that coffee shop to maybe provide, um, let's say every, a VIP customer that they have might get a, a free access pass to one of your classes or vice versa every new member that you get in your gym gets a free coffee at this business now this is a long-term lead strategy and this is what a lot of B2B engagement will look like but now let's just say we get five leads from B2B okay so we've got social happening we've got B2B happening now let's look at another space that we can be live in and let's look at outreach so outreach is an interesting one. It's one that not many people do because you have to put yourself out there, i.e. outreach. And it can be really simple things, like I call it the power of hello. So when you're at the bus stop, you talk about your brand. When you're in the coffee shop, you talk about your brand. When you're in the post office, you talk about your brand. And you slowly start to create conversations and craft them based around the person that you're talking with. So if I was sitting at a bus stop and I saw the same person every day over time, I would build a relationship, right, naturally. So now what I do is I'd naturally bring up the fact that I am a gym owner and this person is more than welcome to come along and check it out. Now that's, that's a type of outreach. That's passive. When it gets really exciting is when you become active. So rather than saying you should come in someday and check it out, you say, I'll tell you what, Chris, I'll take your number now and I'll follow up to make sure that you come in. What was your number? Pass your details on. And then I'll, I'll take control of the process. So now we're gonna get five leads from outreach. What about the next one? The most important one in my opinion, referrals. Most businesses grow by referrals and most businesses don't ask for referrals. How crazy is that? Most businesses grow by referrals, but not many business owners ask for referrals. So there's two really cool things there. One, if that's you now, it's a great sign of your business. You're obviously helping. But imagine if you asked. Imagine if you went above and beyond and instead of waiting for somebody to come, you ask the person to refer. This is a really powerful tool. We've got a referral policy and process in our, in our resource hub, check that out. But this alone can change the game. So now we're gonna get five leads here. Okay, so we, we've now got a few things happening. Let's look at another one. So we're not done yet, we've, we've already got four, but let's get two more. So now let's look at lead boxes or competition boxes. So a lead box is a static, box that sits in 
um, another business premises that's a terrible drawing of a box, but it sits in another business premises and what happens is you run a competition. People enter that competition and we get the leads, we follow them up and we hopefully engage them in our full service. So they enter with a, a free offer or a short term service and we then upscale, up, upsell them to a bigger uh, program down the track. So again, this lead box, remember we don't do any work, this is working when we're sleeping, is now bringing in five leads as well. Okay, so there'll be some, some resources available on lead boxes and all these specific items separately, but now we're just gonna look at the strategic side of lead generation. So we have social media running. Now remember, it's not just Facebook. We've got LinkedIn, we've got Instagram, we've got all sorts of platforms here that we can lean into. We've got B2B engagement. LinkedIn, I mentioned, that's another way to just add that in there. We've got outreach happening. In here, we've got the power of hello. All of this is happening live in our facility and in our business. We've got referrals and we're really switched on here. We've got lead boxes, we've got competitions. So we've got all of these things happening and we still have more space and more scope to do more. So what else could you do? Well, there's heaps of different options. One thing you could do is on a monthly basis, you could run a large scale open day. You could open up your service or your business to potential opportunities and prospects. Right. I'm going to list a couple of different options here because I think, you know, we could we could draw out heaps of different lines, but we're just going to we're going to stick to just six today. But there's many that you could use. So we have an open day potential. That's one. What about service calls? If we engaged our current clients and we did some specific service calls to them, could we then get more referrals, which are also new leads? That's another example. So. Just there, we've highlighted six really clever ways that you can start boosting your lead generation in your club or in your business, starting using the hub and spoke model. So now rather than getting five leads a month, you're hopefully going to be generating at least 30. So see which ones you're doing really well, lean in, see which ones you're not doing and get cracking.